Mm-hmm. Um, so first, I want you to guess who my acknowledgement is. Tiffany Pollard. No. Close. <laughs> Nene Leakes. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nene Leakes. <laughs> Oh, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to say Queen Latifah. You know what? We're going to roll with it. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Looking. I'm Alexis. And I'm Cole, and we'll be your podcast host. So we've been teasing a podcast for a while to some of our closest friends, and we're super excited to finally get this off the ground. Whatever you may be into, there's always something we're looking for. Looking for love, friends, your path in life, your sanity, a Baja Blast at the end of the night, or just a break. So tune in as we explore the intersection of pop culture, personal journeys, and life in the Windy City. We'll have weekly episodes filled with laughter, reflection, fun, some surprise guests, and of course, all things Chicago. So... Keep tabs on us because whatever you've been looking for, it's right here, baby. Period. Yeah. So what's up? How's it going? Uh, nothing much. I feel like it's finally been uh it's been a long time. We're it's finally here. It's been a long time. It feels like it's been 16 years since we've been 16, playing this. 16 carriages? 16 carriages. Right in a way. <laughs> we still need to learn the lyrics. Yeah. Oh my god, do. I can't believe that's coming! I know! We have Act literally. Two. After it's two years, long. it's been. It's been too long. Oh my god! Yes. I feel like the old lady in Titanic. It's been, yeah, it's been eighty-two it's been years. <laughs> is it eighty-two or is it eighty? 80. 80 Doesn't matter. Whatever. It could be sixteen long carriages. Time. She could it's have been, been sixteen her... carriages. Yeah, she's ahead of her. Yeah, days. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Oh my god. Well, either way, excited to finally start this podcast up. I know that sounds so corporate America. Corporate Aaron. <laughs> I know, like, where's corporate Let's Aaron? Circle. You guys. <laughs> so excited. We finally are guys. circling back to the yeah. project that we started. Oh my God, that does literally excited sound Excited like and that. thrilled to start with you on this project. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, in corporate fashion, let's start off with some introductions. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay. That. So, I mean, I guess you could go first. Um, mm-hmm. Tell yeah. us where you're from. Yeah, tell, yeah. tell everybody where you're from. Yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously, I'm Alexis. As You've mm-hmm. seen on the title. Um, the title. <laughs> yeah, you've seen like on Tina the title. Knowles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tina Knowles. Yes. Oh. Um, oh my God! I yes. forgot about that reference too. <laughs> wow. Whoa. If amazing. you caught on to that reference, you are my best friend. No, honestly. Um, so I am originally from uh, San Jose, California, but I was raised in Las Vegas, and then I went to school out in New York, and now I'm doing grad school here in Chicago. Um, I've lived in Chicago for basically three years now. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm doing my doctorate right now in chemistry. I'm in my fourth year. Um, I'm almost on my way out. Thank fucking goodness. (laughs) And yeah, um, just a little bit about me, I guess. Um, you know, when I'm not doing science or just trying to do something Mm -hmm. scientific, trying to get something started in lab, um, I love to explore the city. I love to, you know bike around the city a huge biker over here um and you know just kind of work out and you know work out in the gym and elsewhere if you know what i mean <laughs> and um and yeah. I said, oh. <laughs> uh, oh oh <laughs> that's not <laughs> in the sense that um i work out everywhere um <laughs> anyways um but really uh what i'm uh, most passionate about right now is really this podcast, and I'm also, you know, trying to really get into photography as well. Hopefully that, hopefully I can talk about my journey with that as well. Oh my yeah. God. So what about you, Cole? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let me get into it then. Me, I'm originally from a little place in Florida called Bradenton, Bradenton, Florida. Um, but I uh, grew up a bit in Miami, so all of the Miami people... Uh, listening right now 305 till i die i guess but <laughs> but um yeah i've been here in chicago for about two years now a little bit over two years moved here specifically because i got a new job um as an advertising account executive so obviously i mean i'm just helping a bunch of different brands with helping uh, or excuse me with doing their like advertising strategy um online 
Um, it's been fun. It's been a ride for sure, as a you ride. know. But <laughs> it's been sixteen carriages. It's been right? sixteen carriages. Wait, is it two? Uh, well, we tried to do a sound, you guys. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> boom. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, boom. Literally, boom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. So that's that's been quite a um, quite a ride. Before that, I did like account management, sales, and marketing kind of like stuff for two other companies back in Florida. Um, Any and asset management? No. For kids? Because I, did, <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> I, did, I didn't get it. Anyways, <laughs> asset management. Mm. Okay, so, um, but like, really, I think, yeah, this 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 podcast, I would agree with you, is a bit of a a um a passion project too. It's been, I, have we been like trying? I think we've been trying to do this for maybe yeah. like three or four months now, or something yeah, like that. Well, I mean, could you like talk a little bit about like why you wanted to start a podcast to begin with? Because you, I feel like you kind of really just catalyzed this whole thing to happening. Because if That's if it true. were up to me, it would probably would have never happened it would not have I, happened. yeah <laughs> i am such a mess um but yeah so what would you why do you want to start a podcast i just feel like you talk with your friends you know and you are always like oh i want to do a podcast we should we should have our own reality so tv true. show you know and like real housewives of chicago real housewives of chicago i almost said where i live y'all, don't need, y'all don't need to know that actually. <laughs> like, like i almost said like the specifics yeah. i'm like wait a minute um, just in case we blow up or whatever. <laughs> but anyways, though, yeah, because like I feel like we've been talking about it for years with multiple different friends, and then like at this point in life where you know you have your own space, you have we're put- like maybe a little bit more time. When you're and everything. pushing thirty. Ooh, don't say that. <laughs> uh, for the record, I'm twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. But like, yeah, like I just I don't know. I just feel like this was like the time, and I was like, you know what, 2024 feels like a year where you really want to kind of sit down and like dive into your passions a little bit more mm-hmm. and what you really actually care about rather than, you know, just doing a nine to five. What what did Beyonce work in nine to five? Just stay alive. Mm-hmm. Like nine that's what it felt alive. like. <laughs> um, you know, and outside of that or whatever, obviously you and I, ever since we've known each other, it's been peeking in and gagging and, really? and just laughs for a minute now, mm-hmm. you know? So I feel like it was natural. I was like, I feel like we could do this. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I'm gonna be real with y'all. This is like our first take doing this. I think it sounds pretty good. Where's the applause? So, where's the, yeah, where's the applause? Where's the applause? Woo! <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, my God. No, literally. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so, like, also, I guess, I mean, if we're going off of, like, why I guess other people should listen, I think that's why. It's because, mm-hmm. like, you know, you're passionate about something or whatever. Maybe you have some good things to say. We're mm-hmm. obviously, hopefully, funny and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, But... Just put in a lot of work, so would love to have people come in, just try out one episode, see if they like us, and then, you know, let's see where it all goes from there. You guys are on the journey with us. Woo! Yeah, no, um, I have to agree with that. Yeah. Um, I just really want to, you know, completely pursue my creative outlets this year. I feel like I've, for so long, just put it, put it off to mm-hmm. tomorrow, to tomorrow. And it's about time that I actually pursue my creative outlets because I feel like that I have a lot to offer and that I just haven't been able to do that in other avenues. And I think that also with some something creative, like, you know, you start, for example, a podcast, kind of bleeds over into so many other sorts of things. So, mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, if you see us, you know, in a movie five years ago, then you'd be like, I know where they started. What? <laughs> was that like the, our spring, our spring yeah. from the beginning to yeah. the movie, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we sprung. Whoa! <laughs> we bounced on Light Tigger. Um, so, uh, I guess on that note, why do you think people should listen to us? I, I just mean, did that, didn't I? Did you? Yeah. You weren't listening. Oh, shit. Was I not? Oh, Ooh. my God. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I thought she was gonna or he was gonna say it did you finish that question though no oh for me why do i think people should listen so um you know other than obviously us being funny and naturally charismatic of course of course that's very charismatic <laughs> that's thank <being> you <laughs> that's very good <laughs> no, um, anyways um aside from us being you know just really cool people um it's very interesting because we're both 
you know, we're both queer, we're both people of color, mm -hmm. we are both from different, you know, areas of the U.S., we're also both from different, you know, just sectors of, you know, industry and what we work in, and, you know, we're also kind of, um, you know, I'm in school, you're in the mm -hmm. workforce, you know, you're starting your career, I, um, <laughs> I am trying to start trying. <laughs> So I think that um, we have a really unique perspective that I feel like people should really listen to. Your f***ing mic went off. Oh. We're back. <laughs> That's crazy. Sorry, y'all. We had a, uh, some technical... Te ooh. Te <laughs> some technical difficulties. <laughs> um, for those of you watching the actual video right now, you can see that we had a little wardrobe change mm -hmm. for those of you not watching you would have never known but i just I know. told you anyways mom i do change my clothes every day <laughs> there's a buttons oh Aww. yeah the buttons oh my gosh you're so right buttons. we were talking about how i don't know what we were oh we were we were allowing you guys to get to know us a little bit better um and since we're i guess allowing you guys to get to know us better how about we tell them about how we got to know each other. <laughs> uh, crickets? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so, um, so, yes, yeah, so Cole and I, we actually met out in the wild, which is kind of crazy. Um, a little bit different. Yeah, and so we met actually through now, who now is one of our mutual friends, and I remember that, you know, I was, you know, going to go out for drinks with this guy. And the guy was like, oh, well, you know, at that particular place, there's going to be this guy that I dated and that, you know, I didn't want to like, continue seeing, uh, you know, something like that. I expressed that. It sounds so like, harsh. I didn't want to continue seeing. Yeah. <laughs> well, not, not in that way, but, course, you know, like. Yeah. It's like, oh, I just want to make sure that he's fine, like, okay, comfortable. So then he texted the guy and was like, you know, hey, I'm going to go out with this other guy. The guy in question was like, that's fine. It's okay. And then lo and behold, when we go to this place, the guy in question was actually Cole. And hey so there. I remember, yeah, I just, I remember, I'm like, I, I was like, I started talking to Cole and I'm like, oh, like. What, first of all, like, why was he scared <laughs> of, like, having us two in the same space? And I was also, like, this guy's super chill. So, you know, I was like, oh, my God, like, this is probably, like, a potential friend. Yeah. And then, yeah, what's your what's your side of the story? Not the same thing, honestly. <laughs> but, yeah, no, my side of the story was that I was going to go out. And we had been, I think, talking prior. Or maybe I talked a day or two before. And I mentioned something about going out that night. And messaged me and was like, hey, just want to, you know, make sure that you're comfortable and everything. I think me and somebody else are going to go out. And, you know, obviously, if that's too much for you, you know, like, like you know, if you need boundaries or whatever, I won't go. Which is like, you know, sweet. It's really nice. But I yeah. also was like, well, we're adults, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you can do whatever you'd like, you know. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to go out with somebody else, then that's fine, you know. Yeah, of um, course. You know, and... I think I even tried to avoid you guys. Like whenever, whenever I saw y'all in the in the bar, I said hey, you know, like once. Didn't really talk to you too much, and then um, after that, I I left. Mm -hmm. And whenever actually the guy came back to me to continue talking, and that's whenever you came up out of nowhere and you were like, "Hey, what are we talking about?" Like, <laughs> and I was like, "Who's this?" In typical, <laughs> in typical Alexis fashion. <laughs> yeah, in, in very much typical Alexis, Alexis fashion. Yeah, literally that. That's how I showed up. <laughs> yeah. So that was um um, but that was like good though, you know. I mean, and like you're a very social person, a lot more so than I would say like other people. Whenever you go out, well, mm -hmm. once you like. Sometimes get past your barrier. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you're a little scared to talk to people initially, but yeah. whenever you get past that, I feel like you. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop. No, but <laughs> like, but... uh, kind of... That's that, it's really kind of crazy though, because we met through a guy that I guess we were both kind of talking to, and now we're all just really good friends. So. 
that sounds like the typical well not exactly the typical yeah. gay community like experience yeah but... well i mean it's just so hard to meet friends within our community in general i mean post-college it's always been just really hard to make friends i just feel like people tend to be very kind of avoidant nowadays and yeah. be very i guess measured with how they spend their time um which is fine i totally understand but mm -hmm. i feel like it's part of it's partly because of the pandemic i think pandemic accelerated these trends in a way mm -hmm. um but at the same time it, it feels like people are less willing to make that investment or at least be the first person to make that investment in a relationship yeah. um and you know it's it's fun it's it's interesting with with like social media because it seems like um there's this like pressure to kind of like have this kind of you know perfect social circle or perfect social life mm -hmm. um and i mean i know i know not everyone subscribes to that notion but at the same time i think that's what really makes people afraid from just like kind of wanting to start a, a friendship a connection because maybe they just don't think it'll be worth their time why try you know yeah. there's so many in the same way that like you know dating apps kind of give you a variety of um you know matches to choose from people to choose from it's it's always just this false notion of like having all this choice um it doesn't actually end up liberating us i think in in the in the in the long in, in the long term long run whatever but um but yeah i mean i was also kind of like Shadow banned from Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh my god, still shadow banned. Yeah, I don't know why. Well, if anyone's working on Tinder, let me know. To be, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I, I really, I agree with everything that you, um, you know, essentially said, and especially me like, I think you've been here for what, like, an extra four, three, four years. Yeah. Well, I've that. been. I, so yeah, I've been in Chicago for three years now. Um, and that's actually another element, also like meeting people in the city, mm -hmm. right? Because everyone's so busy, everyone has so like few. Uh, there is so many things to do and opportunities and events that are always happening at one time. It's like hard to kind of wrap your head around it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I've been here. I guess you, you. I've been here like a year after you came. Before, you, sorry. No, yes. <laughs> Do you think that um, now, I mean, in comparison to like my story and how I kind of started making friends and like mm -hmm. how I got to Chicago, do you think that you, it was a little bit easier since you're in grad school, you know, getting your PhD and maybe that helped you find, you know, mm -hmm. people or friends or, you know, whenever we're talking about actually like quality yeah. friends, like do you think it really didn't? it didn't do too much yeah no i mean i think uh i think uh my particular situation i've met a lot of really um cool interesting people you know um but like there's always that step from i guess like acquaintance to friend and i mean mm -hmm. i think with that like only a couple of people in my experience here have like qualified i guess but at the same time I'm like ooh, who's that um at the same time um it's all about like quality over quantity, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. So I guess like any fun stories from like knowing anyone in the city or, I mean, beside mine, of course. Oh, I have to think about that. Honestly. I mean, I feel like a lot of whenever I started out, cause again, obviously like I, I came here mm -hmm. straight from Florida for a new job mm -hmm. and, um, I didn't know anybody. I think I knew one or two people. Mm -hmm. And those two people were from a girl and a guy. Both of them were from Twitter. So mm -hmm. we had met, you know, we, we hung out, went out to the bar one night uh -huh. and everything. And then after that, it was literally on me to like continually actively be on social media or on yeah. Tinder or Hinge or something like that and tell people like, hey, like I'm new here. Also looking for friends. I don't want you guys to, you know, just think that I'm you know, only dating, obviously, because I needed to kind of make some kind of connection, kind of circle here. And then um, um, I guess that allowed me to meet 
some people um and then i also met people through my job and then yeah. you know i just i just i really i told myself you know what we should i should do whenever i move here i need to like go out do whatever meet people right. regardless of how i'm feeling i'm yeah. so new here i don't know anybody that you never know what kind of connections you are going to make so fair so make sure that you know you're staying in front of people and if you're getting invited places go there yes. and i think having that mindset not only allowed me to you know like like almost kind of get rid of this like a little bit of like anxiety around mm -hmm. being out in social spaces especially like alone exactly you know, and talking to people out yeah. of the club or a bar or something like that especially now you know with social media i feel like a lot of people are more comfortable through a phone through yeah, social definitely. media dms whatever than talking to people in public now i feel like i'm so much better about that um but at the same time you know just kind of crossing over that boundary allowed me to meet people that i you know i, I really formed close relationships with right um and now, I mean, on that topic of just how you've grown in these past few years in Chicago, what do you think you're just like most grateful for in in this in this time? You know, what have you like discovered about yourself? Oh my god! I feel like Barbara Walters. <laughs> is that her name? <laughs> I, I feel like this is like a therapy session. Yeah, like yeah. Going back two years. Uh, honestly, I feel like have you slayed or have you been slain? I haven't been slain yet, you know. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, thought yeah. that was going to happen, but actually, no, I, I haven't been slain yet. But I feel like I'm, I feel what I'm most thankful for here. More, most grateful, grateful for, for in your, like, growth. So, honestly, I think I'm most grateful in the past few years. Really, I think just, like, the journey here, you know, to Chicago. It's, it's, it's been so great, you know. I mean, moving somewhere else where you don't know anybody at mm -hmm. all. You don't have any kind of friends, no connections, no anything, and you have to kind of build all of that up. I think it's really allowed me to, as you said, like grow um, in ways that I don't think, or transform in ways that I don't think that I would have been able to had I stayed, you know, like in my hometown or around my um, older friends or something like that. Um, and then beyond that, I would say it pushing me out of my comfort zone enough. To mm -hmm. kind of be like, hey, you have to go out and you have to talk to people. You have to go out and, you yeah. know, meet people regardless because how else are you going to create, like, a community? How else are you going to create a social life here right. in Chicago? Um, so, honestly, I think, like, in the past two years or since moving here, what I'm most grateful for literally is just this move and, and going with it and not being scared to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, past two years? So true. I think I'm most grateful for... Uh, just the support system I've been able to make out here for having, you know, the guts and the courage to continue on in my doctoral program and really just how many great experiences I've had living in Chicago. I think it's my, the, the real first big city that I'm living in. And even if I'm in school and that obviously is a huge time commitment and everything, I've still been having such a great time here and you know I can say that I like spent some of my 20s in Chicago and I don't think many people can say that because it's a very special city and um, I try not to talk too good about Chicago because then everyone's <laughs> gonna move here and yeah, increase true. my rent price um, so yeah don't come here if you're not here already or you have <laughs> to be invited come. by either Cor or I you know, it's kind of like that's it's kind of like, like Raya. It's like Chicago. Yeah, Raya. yeah, exactly. You have to be invited. You, you can't yeah. just Chaya. Chaya. Chia. I was Chia. gonna say that. Chaya. Chia. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, but on yeah. that note, I guess like in the opposite side, you know, talk a little bit about what we're grateful for moving here to Chicago. But what are some struggles that you still feel like like you're still going through? You're still trying to, um, I guess, trying to like learn from. What we're hateful for? No. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. I guess maybe like a little bit. Um, I think the still, still, I feel like it's 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 yes, of you know, made my support system and everything, but I mean, I think still learning about who I am as a person, my interests and my hobbies and all of that, and you know, meeting people through that is still an ongoing challenge. Even though it's kind of silly because I can always just you know do the thing but there's obviously so many things that i have to do on a daily basis so many you know balls i have to juggle quite literally in my head <laughs> um now you know usually sometimes i kind of get into this mode i'm like there's like a monkey with like symbols in my head mm -hmm. 
just because there's just like so much, so many different things. But I think, you know, that, that, that struggle of like finding yourself, I think is universal, but particularly, you know, grad school is just a very tough endeavor, but I think that it's just really crafting me into someone who can quite literally put their mind to anything and get, get it done really. And I think that's like what the biggest takeaway from my PhD will be. Um, so just getting through that, but you know, I have like a year and a half left and it'll get done. Um, get done. Just trust the process. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah, I think, I think I just, you know, I think I'll just find everything out with time and with really just pushing myself out there. Patience is key. Patience is key. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Oh my God. Yeah. What do I still struggle with right now? Honestly, I, I still feel like, I don't know. Honestly, maybe mine would be just still kind of trying to get into the cadence of being like an adult, I guess a little bit. Like mm. that's something that I still feel like I haven't actually figured yeah. out as a 25, almost 26 year old. Like, you know how like, you know, maybe whenever you were younger, you see your parents, like they always have dinner on the stove. They always cook something. They always yeah. go to the store. They have stuff to get. And I guess in a way I felt like by the time I got to this age, you know, that adult age, quote unquote, I would kind of yeah. have those same adulting techniques and habits down. Right. And I don't necessarily feel like that. And like, yeah. it doesn't scare me too much because I feel like our generation is just a little bit different in that sense. You know, we're not having kids maybe like as early. We and can't, we can't, we can't pay we can't enough even, attention yeah. on anything to have kids. Yeah. No, well, we can't even afford anything. We can't even kids. afford it. <laughs> we can't afford, we can't afford to pay attention to anything. We can't afford no. anything. We're we just vibing. Anything. Yeah. Like, Okay, we're vibing. We're just, we're just <laughs> literally vibing. Literally. And like, I, I think that sometimes it kind of like makes me nervous. Cause I'm like, ooh, like I need to be, you know, saving my money a little bit better. I'm, how many years? I think I'm going on my fifth year into like my like career, like working. Mm-hmm. And I guess like, I don't know. I just feel like I could be doing some of those things better. And, you know, just continuing to work on like becoming a more responsible adult, you know? Um, I really don't have too, too much more, like, specific details on that. I just feel like sometimes, I still feel like I'm 21. You yeah, know? <laughs> you gotta stay tuned for the specific details. Maybe I'll figure it out. I don't know. Maybe I will. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Oh, my yeah. God. I mean, I, <sighs> we definitely have grown a lot, so. We have, we have. I think that, you know, I mean, you've watched Past Lives, right? Yes. Love Past Whoever's Lives. watched Past Lives. Fantastic movie. And it what what it really deal, dealt with was just this concept of quite literally you are a different person than you were back in high school. And for example, I ever always think about it. I'm like, okay, if what if I met like little Alexis from high school? Like, what would I talk to him about? Probably Lady Gaga and <laughs> I don't know. Still probably shit talking, honestly. <laughs> yeah, still 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 talking shit about people, um, making it funny, cute, and shit. But like even then though, I, I I feel like I've learned so much about myself and in, in, in the world these past few years that it's almost like that person is not completely unrecognizable, but quite different. And yeah, that just goes to show like the kinds of connections that you have over time and how they evolve. And and, and it's constantly evolving too. Yes. Like and you know, I think one of the, the funniest things about it is like whenever you are in the present, you know, maybe you want something or, you know, you're yearning for something, whether it be you're looking, trademark, but <laughs> you're looking <laughs> for something, you know, whether it be a relationship or like more friends or a new job or something like that. And in the present, maybe you feel like you're ready for that. And then like, once you get into like, you know, the future, obviously, and you look back, I like, like to ask myself every now and then, okay, if, I like if I'm looking back at a specific moment where I wanted X, do I feel like at that time I was ready for that? And a lot of the times I say no, you know, like I'm like, you know, what? no, I wasn't ready for that. I didn't I didn't know enough or I didn't have enough experience or whatever, you know, that answer might be. Any specific example that comes to mind? Yeah. Like relationships, for example, you know, like a couple years ago, a couple few years ago, I like really wanted a like specific relationship and everything. 
Um, and then now I kind of look back at it and I'm like the amount of progress I've made, you know, just working on myself in the past, let's say year and a half, um, going to therapy, all of that kind of jazz, I guess. Yeah. Like, like it's, I've improved. I think I've improved myself so much in the past year and a half that like, I feel like I wasn't ready. <laughs> 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 well at least it works now yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah i um i just feel like i i like i don't know that's why i always kind of try to live by like it'll come whenever it's time you know like i said be patient and just wait it on out mm-hmm. you know so all in due time look out look out <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys well you know what time it is you know what month it is Happy Black History Month! Yay, Cole! <laughs> <laughs> yay me, and yay to all of my fellow Black people, Black folks out there. Um, and honestly, it's been a good Black History Month so far. We got Victoria Monet winning three Grammys. Coco Jones. Coco Jones won a Grammy. What else happened? Megan Thee Stallion got her first pop. Her, her number first one? number one, yeah. It was her first? All right, like only Not her first. first, her first solo number one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Colin Kaepernick's voodoo is still working over the uh, the 49ers because the Chiefs won. So <laughs> Woo! I bet y'all didn't think I knew anything about sports. Go Taylor Swift's football team. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, really though, um, I don't, I don't think it would have been right had we gone on here and released our first episode in Black History Month. And doing and didn't do a Black History Month like acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. Um, so first, I want you to guess who my acknowledgement is. Tiffany Pollard. No. Close. But me, close. Actually, kind of close because they're in the same industry. Oh. Like in a way. Nene Leaks. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nene Leaks. <laughs> Oh, uh, my God. Uh, oh, my refrigerator. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> um, One more. I don't want to say Queen Latifah. You know what? We're going to roll with it. Yeah. But it's not Queen Latifah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but actually, it is a man by the name of Jack L. Cooper. Now, I know y'all are probably like, okay, well, who's going to guess that? Who's that? Uh-huh. Um, so he was actually America's first black radio announcer oh. so i thought it was fitting because obviously we're starting this yeah no. podcast you know maybe maybe one day we'll be on the radio or something yeah um but honestly to give a little bit of context about him like it all began in like the 1920s and networks obviously back then were just giving few hours of weekly programming to black audiences um and really like radio comedies were only limited to like minstrel style shows mm-hmm. um and then in 1929 they had a, um, I guess, all Negro half, uh, the all Negro hour is what the show was called, mm-hmm. premiered on WSBC for the first time ever all across the country. Guess where? Yes. Guess uh, where? Come on, Chicago, right here in Chicago. <laughs> I like that's right, baby. Whenever I read that, I was like, wait, it was Chicago, oh, so yeah. that's so cool. So I don't know. There, there was a lot of leaps and bounds in, in Chicago for Black History too, but that was one that surprised me. Um, and Jack L. Cooper was actually the host. So um, if you all didn't know anything about him, um, I didn't know anything about him. I assume that you probably didn't. Here, mm-mm, squeak, squeak. <laughs> um, here is your Black History fact, your Black History acknowledgement yeah. for this Black History Month. So Yay. round of applause to Jack L. Cooper. What are you, what are you most proud of when you think about your Black identity? Hmm. That's a good question. Not me ex- putting you in the hot seat. Yeah, I know, literally in the hot seat. Honestly, seasoning. Huh. <laughs> so, yes. Thank, yeah. thank, thank God. Honestly, shout out to all of the people of color for that, though. Because shout that's, that's, out. That's, that's, yes. That's come, out, that's come from everywhere. But honestly, boom. Shout out. <laughs> Shoot out. This ain't Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what I think I'm, I'm, I most honestly, it's just our culture, and mm-hmm. even at times where I don't you know, sometimes feel the most, I guess, like, accepted in some ways, giving, uh-huh. you know, the fact that I'm a queer Black, you know, man in this world. 
um, I think still you find so much more community um, within like the black community, just yeah. like this kind of sense of togetherness, regardless of what we're going through and everything because of everything that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, outside of that, our culture, you know, like, I mean, our culture is taken and, 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 and replicated right. um, all around, you know, the world. Yeah. So I, I think that's just something to be like yeah. really proud of. American black culture has really kind of turned of into something that's so, um, that you can look at as so like historical or so like, powerful so so true confident so fun yeah. you know yeah yeah i mean black people created hip-hop they created country. country they created rock music they created house music here in chicago are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> okay anyways we gotta wrap this up now yeah but um yeah so just of course i, I am forever grateful for my black friends and i Love to be there to support you guys and however I can. If it's by, you know, making you some pupusas or something like that, like your wish, my command. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> up your mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, period. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. There you have it, folks. That was our first episode. We want to thank each and every one of you folks for your kind words and support throughout this whole process. We hope that you guys had fun and just stay tuned while we dish about our dating lives. Dive deep into pop culture. Maybe answer some pressing questions such as, is Sia actually trapped in Bay's basement? Will Kamala Harris ever catch that bus? Are mullets and mustaches here to stay? Or are we all going bald in 2025? Because serious or unserious, whatever you've been looking for. It's right here, baby. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,